Okay, let's go ahead and do our last page of Lesson 8. As you might have noticed in Canvas, I said not to copy page 9 and 10 because we're not going to do those. They're not on the test, not something you need to know. So um, we're also only going to do 9 and 10 on this page. We're not going to do 11 and 12 because with our compressed class, now that we've missed so much, I'm trying to like kind of throw out all the extras and just focus on what we'll have on the test and what you need to know for the final and what you need to know for the next class. So these are our last two. And I remember when I was teaching in person last spring, someone said, I just feel like we haven't gotten enough um practice in class like I need to practice some more before I do my homework so after lesson nine that video I do have a quiz that I made up that I give my in-person class so that they can practice some more so I'll go over that with you so if you feel like well I'm kind of getting this but not really you should go and work on your Alex get your Alex done and then after the next lesson this is lesson eight after lesson nine I have a quiz that covers eight and nine and we'll do that together like it's a worksheet or something in class okay so we will get a little bit more practice on this <clears throat> so i did put number nine on the test and so for that reason i think that you should shut off the video and try to do it on your own draw a picture see if you can answer the questions they have two questions um, shade in the price he paid for the shoes um, represent the new price as well as the discount so you should um, try that one on your own okay okay so Hussein went to an athletic store to purchase new running shoes to his surprise the store was having a 20% off athletic shoe sale so the minute I see that I go how many 20s go into a hundred five so let's Divide the bar into five equal parts. So that tells me this. So 20 times 5 is 100. So I have 20% here. I don't even have to read any more of the problem to do this part of it because I know it's something to do with 20% off. So I need to figure out what 20% is, and if he got 20% off, isn't this going to be what he got paid or what he paid for the shoes? So you don't have to do any math work. You really just have to look at the picture. So 20% off means that piece is taken off the whole. So you add those four once we get the dollar amounts, and that'll be the price he paid. So these little bars are really cool. He purchased a new pair of shoes that were regularly priced $60. So this is where you have to stop and think, regularly priced. So don't you agree that that would have to be this? It didn't say they were discounted to $60. They said regular. And wouldn't you agree that the regular price would be the unit, the whole? Say yes. Okay. So this is what they were. So 100% of the price is $60. Well, I need to figure out what each of these are. And again, we picked 20 because of this. And in my head, I went 20 times 5 is 100. That's why there's five boxes. And you can see that adds to 100. So now I need to figure out what dollar amount each one is. Well, there's five boxes. So I can go 60 divided by 5. Whoops, off the paper, Norris. It's going to keep me in line here. So 5 into 60 would be 1, 5, subtract, bring down your 0, goes into twice. So that means each box is $12, So look how easy it's going to be to figure out what he paid now. So 12 times 5 is 60. He got 20% off, so he paid 12 times 4. So if they said on the test, what is the discount? 
you'd say $12. If they said, what is the sale price? You'd say 12 times 4, 48. So everything can be read from the picture. The entire price is $60, but because 20 goes into 100 five times, we divide it by five. So each piece is $12. Discount, price he paid. Awesome! Okay, so this, it says, represent the new price of the shoes as well as the amount of the discount. So right here we would write discount because it said he got 20% off. So that means $12 was taken off. This is a new price which would be 12 times 4 equals $48. So that's how much he paid, that's how much he saved. Together, those two add to 60, which is what they cost. Super awesome, huh? You can read so much information from these. The regular price, the discount, the new price. So it's all there. Okay, this last one we're going to do, um, I want to show you this because eventually this is probably how you're going to do all of your problems rather than make the picture. The picture is really nice when you're learning and trying to understand, but in the real world we usually don't, well, sales are often 20, 25, but like what if you have 11% interest on oh something or 19 percent interest on your credit card and you need to figure something up well those don't go into 100 evenly so it's not really very easy to make a picture so then we have to capitalize on this do you guys remember earlier in the module how we talked about of when you have a number on either side of of this is a multiplication problem and we said that earlier in module three too when we were doing other videos earlier that when you see of i think one was a nut problem and one was a pizza problem and i said they're really multiplication well so is this so 19 percent is 19 over 100 so does everybody agree that's 0.19 because remember, percent means out of 100. If you get 19% on a test, that means you got 19 out of 100 correct. But we learned in Module 2, 19 over 100 is written like this, two decimals. Then we insert the time sign. Then we insert 120. And so I can do this anytime there's two numbers and all they're separated by is the word of. That means I'm going to multiply them. So I always have students at this point in class that go, oh, well, could I have done it with a box? Yeah, you could have figured out 20% and then taken off a percent, but it's a lot of work. This is much easier. So let's go over here to the side and do 120 times 0.19. And remember what we learned about decimals. This means there's going to be two decimals in the answer. So 0, 9 times 2 is 18, carrier 1, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10. Then we bring our 0 down for our second row, and then we do 1 times 0, which gives us another 0, then 1 times 2, which is 2, and 1 times 1, which is 1. So 0, 8, 2, 2, Count back from the back two places. So 19% of 120 is, and does that say dollars? No. 22.8. So I dropped off the zero. If it was money, I would have had to keep the zero. But since it's not money, I could write that. Would Alex count it wrong if you wrote 22.80? No, it wouldn't. But generally if it's not money we leave off any trailing zeros 
So that's what it is, 22.8. So any ones that just have the of sign in between, even this one, 22% or 20% off, it's 20% of 60. If you took 60 times 0 0.20, guess what you get? $12. So you could figure out the discount that way too. But this is what we use when the number is not nice, like it's not 20 or 40 or 50 or 75 or 10 when it's an oddball number. Then we just convert the of to times and it works as long as there's two numbers on each side. So like I said, our next videos will be um, for lesson nine and at the end of lesson nine I'm going to have a quiz which covers lesson eight and lesson nine that we'll just do for practice. So if you feel like you could use some more practice then there will be some after lesson nine. Okay see you later. Take care.